Hey guys, we are from Much Study, and this is our story. So, how did everything start? It all started with a personal experience. What do I want to study? Where do I want to study? And do I want to do it home or abroad? So, we took action and decided to get out of the building and talk to potential customers. Face to face, telephone conversations, Skype interviews, we did it all. We had discovered our starting points, but then the next question arose. Is it an actual problem on a big scale? Initially, we didn't like it. Interviewing felt like a burden, and we were uncomfortable and skeptical doing it. Eventually, however, we ended up thriving on our customer opinions, and we became really good at interviewing. We managed to do 124 interviews with people from all over the world. So, what did we learn from this? We managed to exclude different companies, and we decided to focus our attention on being too for now. At this point, we realized the big challenge we face. To define the problem in a proper way. If we could do that and test our hypothesis, it would lead to success. As a consequence, we did some more of this, but we also went for a more creative approach, with a simple experiment and an intriguing questionnaire. Because, why would we just rely on our opinion if we can have the opinion of the whole world? From this, we discovered a great amount of frustrated students who struggle with the lack of clarity and structure in school information, and students who are afraid to miss out on the right <coughs> The nice thing is, you get to meet special people. Take for instance Fiona Lee, founder of Unicube, who saw a similar problem and revolutionized our ideas on our revenue stream. And this is where we stand now. On our minimum viable product website, you can see the simulation of students that would be interested in a program like the Sam's Master of Management in this perfect school. The students arrive at the program page and get a clear and well-structured fact sheets, a video summary of the program, and the possibility to get some more in-depth information. For us, this experience was an emotional roller coaster with hard lows but far greater highs, and we enjoyed every minute of it. Okay, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to start off with a number, and it's a number 64, 64%. Does that say something to anyone? Ladies and gentlemen, I think I can help you handle this question. <laughs> Sixty-four percent is the percentage of students that have changed their major at least once in their whole student career. And this is how our journey begins. Exactly. So I'm going to take you on a short journey to what we've been through, have been through the last three months. So in every strong project, you need a very strong team. And I think we had the best team. First of all, we had Soraya, who has an unmatched enthusiasm and energy. And she was basically the engine of our team. Then we have Niha, who is the eternal voice of reason. Dominika, with her uh, quantitative background, is the brain, the analytical brain of her project. Then we have Martin, and he has great network and experience in uh, digital business. And then there's me, and I'm really proud that I can present for us today. <laughs> <laughs> so, where did our problem come from? Actually, it came from ourselves. So, while looking for a program, we asked ourselves a lot of questions. What do we want to study? How am I going to apply? How, I'm going to, how am I going to do it practically? So that's where we started from. In order to gain a deep understanding of our problem, we conducted 124 interviews, 16 experiments, and we received 33 questionnaires, which gave us very deep, deep quality uh, feedback. First, we started with interviewing our friends. So, of course, we were very amazed because our baby was gorgeous, but it made some of us quite suspicious. So, we decided to really get out of the building and to interview uh, interview respondents in pairs to also see their nonverbal reaction. And actually, it turned out that interviews with strangers gave us more honest and uh, deep insights. As you can see, this slide is very messy, and this is basically a reflection of our brains during the whole journey. We started with a very poor overview of what we want to do and how we want to handle the problem, and actually, what is our problem. But then, at the end of week 12, you can see that our uh, proposition and our value proposition is structured and very detailed. So we want to help students to find the perfect study program. We want to help companies to promote graduate jobs, offers in internships and to show their profile. And we want to help universities to promote their master programs. Uh, because we want to enrich the experience, we decided to introduce vlog-based content. So after determining our value proposition, uh, we went on to monitor our competition a little bit. We made a distinction between offline companies and online companies. 
And then we also looked into, are they offering just information about studies, or are they also offering added services? Then we found ourselves in the left top position, watch the study, and that's the gap we're trying to tackle. Okay, so then we determined our customer segments. In the beginning, it was a very generic way of determining it. It was based on, yeah, guessing a little bit, but then we went out of the building and tried to look into how the climate actually looks like, and we came up finally with uh, three major um, customer segments, which are students um, and the prospective parents, then uh, educational institutions and corporations. We wanted to solve a lot of pains the um, students and the corporations faced, like students are having problems to find the right program, companies don't find the, pro the perfect profiles for themselves, and universities don't, do not really have a platform to popularize their programs. And we solved it with a lot of games, like, games, like for instance, up-to-date information on the program, ready-made profiles for companies, and so on. Then, what does our customer segment look like? We have four um, in the primary focus, which are the students and their parents. And then we have a secondary focus with uh, our corporate partners and academic partners. We believe primary focus is important because they generate traffic, and then the secondary focus will generate revenue. Um, our target market will be 205,000 people based on um, information from the EU because we're mainly going to focus on the EU and that's based on the interviews and you can see some folks over there. So yes, customer relationships proved to be a real challenge because at first we actually didn't know what it is. We watched the videos and we came up, came up with some ideas but unfortunately after interviews, a couple of first interviews, it turned out that we have it all wrong. So we have to really <coughs> think and rephrase everything one more time. And then uh, at the end of week 12, we believe that we have very good ideas of how to get, keep and grow our customer base and how to maintain our customers. So with every business uh, comes revenues. Uh, however, as you can see at first, we kind of neglected this part. Uh, but then it turned out that, well, if we want to be on the market, we have to well, make money. So uh, we talked with respondents, mainly our competitors as well, because they were very kind enough to help us. And we decided to split our revenues into three streams. First, uh, revenues from students for additional services. Then revenues from companies for uh, selling special packages. And then commissions from universities. We also asked our customers, uh, students mostly, what would be, how, but how valuable is the service for you? And that's how we determined uh, what, what, what is the price for our service, what you can see here in this quote. It's 50, 70 euro. Uh, so, of course, with every uh, business development come costs. So, basically, we want to keep our costs at minimum at first, of course. And our main cost is website maintenance and the research for the website. And we were looking for some solutions for cost optimizations, like uh, special um, open spaces where we can have our office at discounted prices, not fancy office in the city center, because now there is no need for this. Okay, so finally, what we want to reach with, our, uh, with the platform we're making is the outcome. Students using our services have more time to embrace their passions and don't waste their time on things they shouldn't be doing. Okay, finally some information about this. Um, we've been, like Ramal told us, we've been doing um, some videos, some vlogs uh, with us, and we wanted to do our latest entry uh, in front of the class because uh, we really enjoyed it and it was part of our, um, of our whole adventure. So, there you go. Uh, anyway, everyone, so today is our last and final vlog and vlog. We have been in our room watching the video and we're going to have a journey for three months now and we have collected 124 interviews. Uh, it was not always easy, especially in the beginning when we were talking to strangers, but uh, we believe that now after three months you can call us expert of interviews. Uh, we use the business model canvas as a tool uh, to guide us during our interviews and we always kept um, questioning people about value proposition, revenue stream, uh, customer relationship, etc. And we think that it was a very enriching experience. Now we all have a deep understanding of entrepreneurship. And we feel that it is an art of using customer intelligence in order to create a potentially successful business. Throughout the whole year and the whole class, we got to meet a lot of uh, interesting people. And last week we got to meet Andrew. And he told us about 
presenting techniques that we should use in our final pitch. So we're very thankful for that, and um, yeah, we're sure that we're going to give a very good pitch uh, to you. <laughs> And finally, especially, we would like to thank uh, Rohan and Rama and the entire Sims class who uh, made uh, this happen and possibly supported our uh, idea. And yeah, I think that's our last uh, blog. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, wish you all the best for the future. And yeah, that's your much of study. but then we have to somehow make money. So we decided to introduce additional services, like visa support, uh, scholarship, scholarship support, information. We can also help students like by proofreading their applications. Mm -hmm. So maybe like the standard uh, statement of purpose and things like that. And uh, that's going to be one part of the premium services that we offer to students. In addition to that, uh, whenever a company puts their graduate programs or internship offers on our platform, they're going to create separate tabs for all of them. So that's, I mean, and we can also uh, monetize that by creating short videos for them as well. So we maintain our blog-based content. And the third one is universities, where we uh, have tie-ups with them. And for every student that goes to that university, we can get a commission from them. Mm -hmm. So these are our three main streams. And where, where is your focus going to be in terms of countries? Is it the home of Europe? Europe. Europe. is going to be Europe, yeah. yeah. We've, based on the interviews we got, um, yeah, we had very mixed answers in the beginning uh, because some people said in China you really have a need, for instance, in, uh, in Africa as well. But eventually we figured that it would be better to just focus on Europe for now uh, because you have a lot of alternative options uh, in Asia, for instance, and in Africa um, that are already paid or that even, or are even free, so that is really hard to compete with those. And also because Europe is the market that we're most familiar with, and that we're sure that the problem is here. So that's in Europe, there are probably tens of thousands of courses, are there? Yes. There certainly are multiple thousands. Mm -hmm. And collating information on each of them in different languages, different systems, whatever, how are you going to do that? The thing is, uh, the information is on the uh, homepage available already from the universities, and it's in order to decrease costs uh, for, for, for us, we decided to offer universities a form where they can fill out the information, mm -hmm. and therefore we can decrease costs and still offer all the information needed for students to provide them with the best solution. Did you talk to the universities? Of course. Uh, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> 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 We also <laughs> talked uh, to program managers from different universities. Yeah, did you talk to anyone from marketing universities? Because I know, for example, is it masters in Europe or masters in the US? So, so in the sites, for example, you see people just want to be involved in the world of the content all the time, so there's actually no information there. Mm -hmm. Did you talk about the department? So I just wondering, did you get any feedback on what was the uh, We talked to program manager here. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. But also in other countries? Yes. Yeah. I'm just ask if you're um, obviously if you're going to be very successful, you're going to have a lot of students accessing you, um, and to, to fund that, you're going to need to really promote your additional services. But given that that's the target of individuals, whether it's trying to help with these applications or so on, how would you scale that? Because if you've got Looking at 200,000 students, let's say, even a small minority that they all want additional services, how do you scale that up in a way that should set? Well, I believe that at first, with every business development, come most more costs and revenues. So we would have to we would have to price these services in order to cover for uh, people who would actually serve these students. So I think that. that 